Welcome to our 2023 Wildwood Grand Lodge 42 view. Starting right in the back corner here, get a short cord inlet. So if you pop it open, you're gonna find a little metal tab in the bottom corner there. It's gonna line up with this tab here. Press them in together, little eighth turn to lock it down. Then you get the threaded collar in the back there to properly lock it into place. As you follow the cord back, you're gonna find a standard 50 amp end here. Some campsites will have that, some won't. So we do provide you with this adapter here. We can take that 50 down to a 30. Most campsites do have that. You just plug straight on in, you're good to go. And we also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to take that 30 down to a standard household outlet, you got the power to do so. Up from there, you're gonna find your a little uh, outlet right in the very back here. There's no gate valve on that one. That's gonna be for your pre-plumbed washer and dryer location. So that would just be a straight dump. There's no tank there. So if you're running a washer and dryer, just make sure you got that cap out. It's just gonna drain itself right out. In front of it is your galley tank. So you get that little valve there. You just open that up, allows the galley tank to drain itself out. Another couple of steps forward to get your black tank. So as you open that up, you can see it's got the same ears on it. The sewer hose is gonna have. Comes in the same way, clicks into place, simple as that. Black valve, you just pull that, allows it to drain itself out. The black tank is filled from your black, or sorry, black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilet. Of course, it's gonna be your dirtiest water, so we should dump that one first. Up from there is a black tank flush. So you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically just some debris inside of the tank hanging between the probes. So your water hose will just plug into here, open up that black valve, turn on the water, I'll flush out that tank for you. Beside that is your exterior shower. So you'll get a key just like this guy here. Stick it in there, open her up. Hot and cold water, standard head and hose. The dog's out getting muddy, you can spray them off before he gets inside. Once you're done, just wrapping the hose around the handles and lock it back down. Straight underneath that's your low point drains. You just open up those valves, allows the water system to drain itself out. So if you leave in the unit for a while and you don't want your water going stale or stagnant, you can drain it before you leave. And then in this corner, as well as each corner of the trailer, you're gonna find the stabilizer jack here. All it does is run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up and it'll get rid of any sort of bounce or sway you got in the unit. Just keep things firm while you're out camping. Up from there again, we get your hot water, hot water compartment here. So you can see you got your winterizing valves as well as a pressure relief valve in the back there. So it is just electric. So once you get inside, I'll show you that switch. Before you turn it on with that switch, though, you just wanna hit this relief valve right there. You should get that water coming out. If you're not getting any water out, there's just the chance that it's empty and you wanna make sure that it's full before firing it up just so you're not burning out your elements. To drain that tank out, it's just that little plug right there. You just unscrew it and allows it to drain itself out. These two little black things there are just little vents for your back room. Simple as that. Coming down the slide, get that little stove vent there so you can see that flap inside is opened up, just allowing our fumes inside to be evacuated out by our fan. If you're to take that flap and push it into place, you'll hear it click, and that'll just kind of close it off, prevent any dust from kicking up in there while you're out traveling. Right back here, we get the gray tanks. So this is gonna be for your kitchen sink. Same thing as in the back. You just pull that valve, drain it itself out. Exhaust for your furnace here. So if you're ever running your furnace, you just make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. Fresh water inlet beside it. Water hose will plug into there, turn on the water, and it fills up your fresh water tank. You know that tank is full, and so it starts spitting water out of that vent there, as well as a little blue pipe kind of right in the back there. City water connection right underneath it. Same water hose to plug into there, turn on the water and that'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit. And then the drain for your fresh water tank is just this guy there. Just pull that gate valve open, allows it to drain itself out. The storage compartment here, magnetical latch holds it open. Inside of here, you're gonna find your sewer hose. It's got the same sort of adapter on it that all of your sewer caps are using. Get your water hose in here as well. Inside of that water hose, you'll find your park adapter. So your 30 amp into there, 15 to a standard outlet. And here's also a little table. So it's just got this little lip on the back of it. Two little standoffs. I'll kind of show you where that clips in in just a second here. Around to the front of the unit, this little black box there is your battery box. As long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back or your seven pin to your tow vehicle, that battery is charging for you. These knobs, if you loosen them off, push them back, you can open it up, you get access to your propane tanks. For the video, I'll just pull this right off. And I can show you. So it's currently green and pointing over to this tank, letting us know we've got propane and we're running off of this tank. If we were to go red, it's just letting you know you no longer have any propane. We'll just flip that change over to the other side, run off of that tank, we'll get the other one filled. Standard tongue jack up front, one way's up, one way's down. U5 protected outlet towards the front. The patio entrance here, we're not going to be using that today, but of course you can use it. You'll have the key for it. The two exterior speakers here, and then this little channel here is where that little tabletop would sit onto. You have that back ledge, or that back lip that would sit in the back there, and it just sits down. You have your standoffs that would just hold up against the wall. G5 protected outlet and a cable and satellite outlet. If you want TV outside, you got the power to do so. This window does also open wide open, so this table kind of becomes like a serving area with the intention that the unit would have a deck beside it. 
little T latch here. Could slide into there, just holds the door open for you. And then right in the very back of the unit, you get your cable and satellite inlets. Coax cables just plug in, fire up your TV location. So I'll make your way inside the unit. Both these steps are both the same. You're just grabbing this handle here, flip it on out, flip that last step over, make our way inside. So as we get in here, obviously it'll be much easier for you to come in that patio door, but we're just going to come up towards the front here. So straight across from your patio door is your slide out switch in the bottom right corner here. You're going to press and hold out. Both your slides are tied in together on a hydraulic system. So the bedroom is going to go first and then the kitchen will go. So once it's fully extended, you can just kind of hear a, a little load on the motor, kind of it winds a little bit. Once you hear that, you'll stop. Bottom center here is your ceiling light switch. It turns on this dimmer, to press that, turn on all your ceiling lights. If you press and hold it, it'll dim them down. Continue holding, it'll dim them back up. Release at any point and it just chooses that level of lighting. Outside speaker, turn that on, turns on little blue lights inside of your speakers out there. That light switch on the right does your awning light outside. And then your water pump is on the switch on the left there. So you just turn that switch on. It turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. At the top, we've got your monitor system. So on the left, we have battery. You can see we're currently full. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, will go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black tank. Black one is what is used. Black two is not in this unit. Gray tank is going to be for your bathroom sink and shower. And galley is going to be for your kitchen sink. This big switch down here on the left turns on your ceiling fan right in the back there. Side, it's your thermostat. So you press that bottom bar, it'll wake it up. It's going to start from off, hit it again, it'll come into fan low. This, of course, is moving some air around with the low fan. Same idea on fan high, just moving some air around. Cool high is where it'll actually run the compressor. The high fan will be on all the time, though. Cool low, same idea, just now the low fan. Cool low auto is where it becomes an on demand system where both the fan and the compressor will cut in and out as needed. Cool high auto, same idea. Now we're just selecting our temperature with the arrows there. That'll kick on the air conditioner. With the air conditioner going, you got two different options. You can have these two louvers here closed, in which case we're using all of our ceiling ducting to move the air. Or you open it up, or if you open them up, and it just dumps all of its air into the living space here. So when you first go to your campsite, you want those open, cool off this area as quickly as possible, and close them off and start moving the air through out. After cool hot auto on this rear thermostat, if we hit it again, it'll come down into heat and turn off the air conditioner, turn on your furnace. The furnace is moving its air through all your floor registers. After heat, you hit that bar again, it comes down into off and then just kind of cycles back around. So we'll head into the front bedroom here. First thing I'm gonna point out is that doorknob. It does look a little bit wonky, but it needs to be that way so that it clears that. It's just kind of a design thing. As you come in here, you get your light switch right up on the wall. You'll also notice that light right there. It is just on a motion sensor. So as soon as it picks up motion, it's gonna turn itself on. Straight up from that light switch is your thermostat for this rear front air conditioner. All right, so this works the exact same way. You get fan low and high, cool high and low, cool low auto and cool high auto. After that, it just doesn't come into heat because it's not connected into your furnace. So it just cycles back around. This thermostat is gonna control the air, air conditioner that we've got pretty much straight up in the rear loft here. Uh, blinds throughout the unit just kind of sit where you leave them with the exception of seven in the or six in the living room that i'll show you in a minute here okay all work the same way the storage space here also get your outlets so antenna outlet on the left side here turning that antenna on is just that button there you get that green light letting you know it is turned on cable and satellite outlet beside it power outlets beside those if you pick up the foot of your bed, you do get access to your storage compartments. And across the top of the bed is just kind of open storage. Little reading lights up here as well. They just got their own little switches there. And you can kind of point them around where you like them. And then the center is the big light. We also get a fireplace up here. So we're just going to open up this closet space. And then right in the back, you can see we got that switch. So the fireplace is turned on. can't read apparently. 
No, I can read. It's just not working. Well, you have a power button on the right, and then it's a light switch in the center right. And in the center is your bottom illumination. On the left side is your fan speed high or low. Then on the left side is a timer. I'll get that sorted out for you once we're done here. More closet space and the storage space here as well. And now we'll head up to the loft. Get the little spiraled staircase. And as you get up top here, there is a light switch somewhere. I thought. That's over on the wall here. All right. Pretty well wide open up here. Get a USB outlet as well as a power outlet in the back. You got six cubby spaces here. Get the same sort of air conditioner outlet here so you have your louvers that you can have opened up or closed and then same thing over here the outlets in the back and then up front there you get your uh, cable and satellite outlet as well as a pre-wire for wi-fi up on the wall here by your patio entrance you get your three light switches here so the one on the left is going to do kind of your entry lights here middle does your pendant light and on the right side you get an accent light above your slides above that we get all your shades so basically one two three four five six and then seven through the slide out so you just select which ones you want to move and then down and then you can see they all just go right your TV is also on this switch here, so I'll activate the TV lift, press and hold up, and the TV will make its way up. Once it's up all the way, it'll just kind of stop in place. There we go. Awning is right down below it, press and hold extend and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning is fully extended, we're going to see a little black flap come down as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're going to stop. If you to continue extending, it can actually line itself up backwards, in which case your fabric would be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. There's a flap, there's the tube, so we'll stop right there. Now if it to start raining, it's first going to hold the flap. Anyways, what you can do is grab either arm, front, or rear, whichever one you can reach, basically. We're just going to pull straight down on it, and you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. And I feel like that is better because it does give you more shade. You can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in, though, you just want to make sure these arms are back out straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the risk of bending them. Then we can go and press and hold the track, and the awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just going to watch to make sure that your fabric's at the top of the tube. And the last thing to keep in mind with your awning is it does catch a lot of wind, so once you get up to about 10, 15 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in. Again, just so you're not going to risk bending your arms. Kitchen. You get your residential fridge here. Household works just like you would have it at home. Fridge up top, freezer down low. Microwave here, pretty standard, just like home. Just with the addition of your light as well as your vent. So that's that vent that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up. For your stove, you're gonna press those knobs in, bring it over to that little flame. Once you get it going, you just hold it for another second, and it can release and hold itself. The center one seems to be the most finicky usually. Whoops. Once you're done, just turn the wall off. For the oven, you're going to flip it open. That knob on the left there, press it in over that little sparker. Gets the igniter going. Same deal, once you have it going, hold for a couple seconds, then you can turn up to your desired temperature and she fires right up. Once you're done, turn it back down just to pilot. It'll hold just the pilot light. If you're going traveling, you just want to make sure it's turned right off. On the right side is just a timer. Drawer space here. Little light 
above the counter, or above the counter there. Storage space up top. Inside of here, you're gonna find that binder. Binder's got all of your owner's manuals, any remotes, any keys, anything like that for the unit. You're gonna find right in there. And just open storage, open storage. The island, you get your sink, hot and cold water, of course, dual basin. A little bit of storage underneath it, just being mindful of your drains and your water lines. The island space here. So you just get your island, you get your bar stools here as well. A couple of GFI protected outlets underneath there. You also get your accent light there as well. Down underneath it's your LP detector. Propane's heavier than air, so it's on the floor. That guy detects it and starts going off just like a smoke detector would. Smoke detector, straight up from there pretty much. See if we can reach it to test it. Just... There we go. Pantry, that opens on up and straight up top you got a little motion sensing light so in the back you can't really see the switch but on the switch there's a one and a two. One just means on, two means dual function so as soon as it senses motion it'll turn itself on, lack of motion turns itself off. All your central back hoses down there as well. These lights here just got their own switches right on the side. Got your lounge area here all set up. Yeah. Fireplace should be the same as the one up front. So your power button on the right there, center right you have that back illumination. So on the center you have that bottom illumination. Center left is your low and high fan. And on the left is that term timer. Stereo straight up from it. Power button in the center there turns it on. Select is gonna get through all your settings, mode through all your inlets. Volume controls on the right side. Zone one is the sound bar itself. Zone two is your outside set of speakers. The TV is all set up and everything is hooked up right back in here. All right, so you can see you got your cable and satellite outlet, antenna outlet, and then your two power outlets there as well. And then up to this loft here. The light switch is just right over on the side there. Pretty well identical to what you had up front. You get your power outlets in the back, cable and satellite outlet in the left side there, as well as your cubby space. This emergency exit here. You'd be pulling this red tab to get rid of the screen, take this handle here, throw it outside, hop on out, park it near a tree or something, I guess, because that is quite the draw. And then into your bathroom, the light switch is just right up on the wall there, GFR protected outlet kind of right beside it, test on the bottom, reset on top, so if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Hot and cold water at the sink. Now with this thing, because it shoots straight out, do keep that in mind. If you've got any form of air in your water in your water system, it's going to come shooting out of here and come straight at you. So just get yourself a little rag or something. Just to make sure that it's shooting down. Once you get it going, it does flow nicely. Underneath, it's a little bit of storage. Inside here, you're going to find that toilet paper dispenser. We don't install that just because location is personal preference. Drawer space here, closet space in the back. Back there, you're gonna find that switch for that hot water tank. Super simple, you just turn that switch on, fires up your hot water tank. Down underneath, it's your converter. Press up top and center, it'll pop on open. You get all of your breakers in the top here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the center, so just turn it off and then back on to reset it. All of your fuses are on the right side. Window right beside me, up above it is your roof vent or your rear vent. You'll just be pushing that out. Button on the top there turns on the fan. All right, just draws out any air. I need a washer and dryer, so they're all pre-wired for it and pre-plumbed as well. And then the shower, you get the fancy one, so you get your travel latch here, I'll open that up for you. So on the bottom, that is your hot and cold selection, so you can see H on the left, C on the right. This guy here just shoots, chooses where you're shooting it out of. So I believe the way it's set up right now is to use the shower head as traditionally, and then you have the option to use these two, or all three or the top one and the bottom one, whatever, all the fancy stuff. I'm sure you'll have fun with it. And then the toilet here, pretty straightforward, just flips on open, get your flusher on the right side, and then just kind of to make sure that uh, you know, we know about it. That back piece there is an additional piece that added on, just customer wanted it, so we got that in here for them. Right. So that's about it for this unit. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call, 204-237-7272.